Okay, so by this time, let's create the camera now. Yeah, something like this. Start making the camera. So, create the camera. And to create the camera, just uh, there's two ways to create the camera. First is by clicking this icon here. And second is by go into the create menu and select camera also and when you do that just click this icon copy active view so it will copy the actual uh, view on your perspective too, because we are on perspective right now and hit accept and the current camera will inherit that view from the perspective so in order to see that we are going to the camera right now so that is the actual camera view and we are going to change some going to zoom in here so in order to move the camera you just go to the parameter settings and go to the transform and you can move the camera back forward side view and rotate and aside from the mouse wheel here you can also do that you can also move the camera like that and you can also use this uh, thirds guide it is very helpful when composing your uh, image and zoom in more closer by selecting this focal length and focusing So that's how you compose the image yeah like that but you just, so that's how you use the rule of thirds make it, make it more visible uh, to align the image to the eye level or any angle that you want so your image will be more uh, pleasing when rendered pleasing to the eye okay let's save that again we're gonna make her uh, look at the camera right now so select the head and then go to the left eye and then go to the parameter settings and go to the constraint and point at the camera so she will be looking at the camera right now okay okay next is we're going to add now a spotlight as you can see from this image here I'm using a spotlight so I just use one key lighting which is the spotlight the most brightest of them all so I show you some technique with the spotlight here you can either create a spotlight by clicking this icon here or create go to the menu create and this one so either of these two options and this one if you want to apply the current setting of the perspective view select that click accept and let's go to the spotlight view right now as you can see this thing here this out this circle here you can see this circle that's the perimeter of the lighting so let's go to the light and that's let's adjust that one the spread angle i just want it to be focused on the model Okay, that will do. And then for the color, I wanted something like purplish. Purple. Pinkish purple, something like that. And as you can see from this image here, then we're going to create something like whitish effect. So we're going to use the Kelvin temperature, set it to around 7500 Kelvin. 
and for the lumen uh, let's just crack it around 300,000 lumen let's see first like around 200,000 how it look like so let's go to the camera view and flip and video array okay so I kind of like the way it looks like right now and now we are going to you can see there's the lighting in there we are going to create a distant light also as you can see from this image here we will create a distant light which just to make set up the mood in order to create a distant light just click this icon here or go to the create menu and select new distant light and apply again to the default transform so when creating this distant light the parameters doesn't uh, moving the distant light it doesn't matter if it's far or far or close to the object it won't affect the lighting but the angle of the distant light is the one that affect the lighting the model and also the intensity but moving it very close or far doesn't affect so distant light is like a sunlight it uh, simulates the uh, lights on the horizon like a sun so that's that's what the distant light is so let's go to the photometric and for the light let's ask I select something like this color save again so you see, as you can see this spotlight is uh, overpowering all the lights set it to 120,000 So the distant light I just want to have a it's just uh, a fill light I just want to have a little bit of detail on the shadow area so that you can see what's going on yeah something like that so you can still see what's going on in the shadow not too bright I like how the lighting now okay so from here from this image you can see also uh, I have used a point light also to set the mood for the environment aside from the fill light this and light so we will use point light we will create a point light so in here go to perspective again you don't want to touch that uh, camera already which is in place you're going to create a point light so there's two ways to create a point light or again here create a new point light here this icon we hit create point light and uh, apply to the full settings so it will be loaded on the uh, default axis and let's go to the side by side view and I want this point light something along here but I don't want it to be seen by the camera and yeah, something like that and then a little bit higher go back to the camera view Okay, I can still see some lighting in here. Let's move it a little bit. Okay, that will do. And then for the light, let's make it a little bit purple in color. And for the lumen, that's around 5,000. So if we go to the single view again, 
can see the effect of that pinpoint light. So let's see what else lighting we did use. Uh, so yeah, so those are all the lightings we have used so far. So distant light. Let's grab this. Let's lower this around 500. I don't want too much detail to be shown. Just a silhouette and a little bit of lighting we do, since that is the uh, kind of lighting I want to be shown. So you can just fine tune now because since we are on the lighting right now. So that's how I do my process and work. I don't want to go back and forth. I just want to do everything in relation to the uh, object model lighting. So if I go to the lighting, I, I want to do everything on lighting. If I go to camera, I just want to do everything on camera. Although the camera, anytime you can do it. But uh, it's good to have a process right now, so that will make your work faster and save you time. And it's a very good habit to do. Okay, so I'm liking how the way it looks right now. So everything else, uh, we have the props already in place, the model in place. The custom boards we did apply, emission lighting, the lighting we did apply, the force, uh, what else do we need to do, let's take a look. So we left only with the camera settings here, like that's more fun, okay, so let's go to the side by side camera view and uh, let's go to the left view. So if you did apply the depth of view, here is the uh, this wall marking the placeholder for the depth of view. In here, from here to here, you can see the uh, will be in focus. So if you move this one here. Okay, so this two here, these two boxes here is the actual depth of view. So we want her something like uh, the depth of view. We want something like around her eye to start around her eye. So starting from here, from her eye. until from here let's say until not up to the wall but this eye level until her eye and until her shoulder or until her body Let's just look somewhere around her eye. Okay. Okay, and that's until her shoulder, something like that. Okay, so we did apply also the depth of view for the camera. Uh, that's it for now. There's a lot of settings here the lens, the blade, that's it. And then let's go back to the single view. Now we will go to the render settings, go to the general, so I want it to have a higher resolution for now, let's type 1200 for now, and go to the environment, uh, environment lighting is turned off for now, yes, uh, filterization, make sure Firefly filter enabled is on and go to the progressive rendering uh, let us now get it to one so we will go into render this 
and max sample is uh, like around 500 I think that will produce a good image and make sure you save all the project and we are now ready to render and I'll be back with you and to see the final result okay hello everyone so here we are again back again to the dust studio so this is the final uh, rendered image of the uh, project that we have uh, created before and uh, as you can see uh, there's some um, there's some light things going on but a uh, piece of advice I may sure be but although it depends on the situations less light sources you have the better the the image will be so in my case i have uh, created uh, several uh, multiple light sources so that's not a good example although it's a, it's a learning process for me but as you uh, progress with your rendering and setting up the scene for the model you will consider the lighting as a very uh, important factor in uh, producing a visual appealing uh, rendered image and uh, yeah so we compare my first render from this one here they kind of almost the same so this render here uh, the first one that I've made is also exclusively rendered using DAS Studio uh, there's no post-processing involved with this so uh, you can also apply some uh, tone mapping options which is uh, can be found in here when you go to the render settings and there is this tone mapping options but this one is kind of advanced so we will not deal with that but i have used tone mapping options also to produce the image that i have uh, desired so as you can see there's a big difference with uh, tone mapping and just the regular render settings so this is just the regular render settings that we have uh, used right now and you can see some artifacts in there and this is the uh, render settings that I have applied using the tone mapping uh, settings and it is very it's a big difference and it will step up your rendering so that's all that's all that we, I have done in this process so uh, keep watching for my future videos and hope you subscribe and hit the like button and uh, stay tuned for more video tutorials from of the Dust 3D with Blender. So this is Matt 3D Arts. I uh, hope you enjoy and learn something from my process. Mm -hmm.